And let's talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs first. That's our first uh, actual real planned segment. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs blowing a 3-1 series lead to the Montreal Canadiens, capping it off with a unwatchable pretty much 3-1 loss to the Habs on Monday night. Um, Scott, it's a good thing we got Corey Wilson Schmuel on the podcast last week when I'm pretty sure he said, yeah, we're going all the way to the top four and yeah. they're out. Um, Scott, your initial thoughts on the Habs beating the Leafs? Well, oh, um, Carey Price was an absolute brick wall, to be fair, for the most part. Um, the price was right. The price was right. And did John Tavares being gone, like, contribute to this loss? Maybe. It might have helped a bit. But the fact is, the Leafs were built to be deep enough and to be able to beat at least one team in the playoff round. And the team, maybe, yeah, they, they would have beaten the Oilers for sure. But the... I don't know. I just don't know what happened. Uh, I, I don't know if there's any team they beat for sure at this point. Yeah. That's like, it. I just don't even know. What do you, who do you beat for sure if you're going to do this? Yeah. The Anaheim Ducks? Not, not even them. I, I, not with, hey, not with Gibson and that. Cause remember, they couldn't get by uh, good goalie, right? So, well, the, I was going to say the other thing is that like the Montreal Canadiens haven't beat the Red Wings in like over 800 days. And so, you know, <laughs> By proxy of Montreal beating Toronto and Montreal not having beat Detroit, technically Detroit is beating Toronto. Just throwing that out there. Um, the here, viewers, we don't understand. Detroit hasn't played Montreal or Toronto in probably two years. So Ian's what Ian's saying has a little bit of. Uh, I said I said by proxy. I didn't say it was official. I just said it was by proxy. <laughs> um, I don't know what you do if you're Toronto. I don't know what you do if you're the Maple Leafs. Like, run it back next year, I guess, and go for it. Callum, what are your thoughts on the, I mean, on the Leafs? Yeah, that's it's just embarrassing at this point. Like, you have what four players above forty-two points. Montreal had one, and it was Tyler fucking Toffoli. Yep, Toffoli. Like the Leafs have what Matthews, Marner, Nylander, Tavares. <laughs> I got Riley and then Hyman's Riley. top six forward now. Spezza have- fucking put up 30 points, league minimum. <laughs> league minimum, dude. Like, that is ridiculous. I know a lot of people uh, have been like saying, like, oh, like, trade Marner. Don't trade Marner. You cannot trade Mitch Marner. Are you kidding me? Like, why would you do that to yourself? I think you run it back and you just, like, hope they gain experience. I mean, obviously, You're we've gonna, been hoping yeah. they've been getting experience from the last couple, seven game seven losses but I, I guess not um but yeah it's embarrassing when your, your team is by far the best in the your, your division and it's like the worst defensive division in the world like in the nhl and you face possibly the worst team in the in the playoffs and you lose a 3-1 series yeah, yeah. like do you you gotta wonder if like the least players are just in the locker room after game six being like oh fuck it's gonna happen I said I said it after Game Six. I'm like, there's no way Toronto is winning Game Seven. Like when you blow Game Six, it's like Toronto's not winning Game Seven, right? No confidence. Yeah. You have no confidence. Like, like you, you're yeah. here. Like here we go again, boys. We're going through the cycle all over again. And I just, I, I honestly, I, I said this after last night. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I don't because when when you finish the season, you're like, okay. What do we need to do to improve next season? It's like, this was your team. This was your chance, and it didn't work out. You got to, like, you got to work on it with the guys or something. Like, this can't keep happening every single year. Like, Mitch, you got to work with Mitch. You can't, like, he. you got to work with him to, like, be, I don't know, just maybe take the pressure off, like, off him. Because I know the guy cares, obviously. You saw what he like after he took the, the fucking yeah. uh, delay a game penalty, he saw like in the box, he definitely was pissed. But like, you can't do that with that with the stupid ten nine three junior number. Like, you can't do it. You can't like it. It. There's he, something, some, something I heard. I, I can't remember who I heard it from, but like Marner has five puck over glass penalties in his entire playoff career, and like five goals. <laughs> Yeah, five like, goals. He hasn't scored in his past sixteen. Yeah, like something, something ridiculous like that. Like, 
and I think I think it was Jay Fresh who put out there like the odds of the Maple Leafs losing all of these elimination games in the last five six years like the odds like the odds of it happening was one point three percent I think Jay Fresh oh, said them fuck. like. The like how it played out had a one point three percent chance of happening. So I don't know if you could just. It's really difficult to just say, yeah, we just got unlucky, and just keep going well, forward. That and, that's a and really then here's thing. here's another thing too is that Matthews and Marner are elite players in this league. Don't I, no one can argue that here, correct? No, no. Okay, there we go. So the fact is, like, you look at someone. I hate to compare them to like Ovechkin and Backstrom, but they didn't win the cup. Ovi won it in his fourteenth year, right? And Matthews mm-hmm. is in what year six, like five or six. <clears throat> so I just got to give the team time, let them, for, let them develop, let them, I hate to say it, be patient, but like Callum said before, maybe we have to run it back, new, more experience. They're going to be older, wiser, bigger, faster, stronger. <clears throat> maybe Mitch, get, and, yeah. Mitch and Austin got to work on this all summer, dude. You can't, this is, this can't happen with that payroll. <laughs> It's, like if you yeah. if you want like if the issues help you don't take you take a bridge deal and then you take the big money after because yeah. you want you can like take the, <laughs> take the bridge deal now you could have had I guess more players you don't have to pay a first for Felino because that was <laughs> stupid so it, like that was the biggest gamble and obviously look how that worked he couldn't even play after the games he was injured and yeah. the other games well he fought Corey and one Corey Perry and one for no reason I mean I guess <laughs> like it, I guess it's maybe because like they're there wasn't any intent. I mean, everyone watching the like the Perry and Tavares thing, there wasn't any intent, but like it oh, was just yeah. like nothing happened afterwards, I guess. So that's fair. Yeah. But like, I don't know, Felino, that that first round, like, I mean, it's gonna be a later first round, it's a bottom half. It's the first rounder this year. Or was it this year or is it next year? This year, I believe. This year, huh? Uh I'm on cap friendly. Let me see this. It is pick traded. Yep, that's it. They're, they're, so that pick could literally be anybody because this draft is so open. It could literally be a franchise talent. It could also oh, just be at, at Tyler Ratty could fall down. Yeah, he he could. <laughs> Ol, Olin, There's a lot Olin, of guys down there. Olin Zellweger, Everett Silvertips defenseman could go. There's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys. Yeah. Columbus. Anyways. Um, I also want to deep get... draft in the sense that there's a lot of quality players, but there's no like elite Highland. That's superstar. the point. I guess that's what Dubas was thinking when he did the trade. It's like there's there, we don't know what we want. So if you give it up for a chance to get like a guy like Felino, it can give us, I guess, more grit. I mean, he's not scoring. I, I just remember like, I, dude, Leafs fans are so delusional with the, 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 the all Galchenyuk's going to come in. He's going to be point per game. Oh, and then obviously he wasn't because it's fucking Galchenyuk. And then Felino comes in and like plays with Matthews and Marner and gets like four points in four games. And then they're like, oh, this guy's point per game. This guy's going to be sick for us in the playoffs. And obviously when you put someone against those guys in a no pressure situation, you're going to be, fo- you're going to be point per game. Yeah. I don't hear anybody criticizing the Riley Nash trade and he didn't get anything. No, but um, <laughs> I, I also, I also wanted to act like, Give some love to the Montreal Canadiens, who did battle back from a 3-1 deficit. Carey Price, like Scott said, was outstanding. Uh, shout out the young guns, uh, my hero, Cole Caulfield, Jasperi Kakaniemi. Um, the defense was just terrific. Oh, yeah, dude. Denol, and, and the, Denol played amazing defense. Denol played an mm-hmm. amazing. I thought Jacob Evans had a really good se- uh, series. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shout Brennan Gallagher was, getting getting almost a yeah. game winning goal five. Um, against I just remember like texting Ian before game five, like they're playing Gustafson over Romanov, and now Gustafson played the last three games. They won every one. Yeah. And so I guess Very like good. I just can't believe that because I I think this guy's like one of the most brutal defenders in the league. <laughs> and like the, the the fact that the moment he comes in, they don't lose is insane. I mean, he only played six minutes in game six. I don't even know about game seven, but he he got a point on the parry goal. So I mean. Game seven, his his like game seven, he would go on and Toronto would throw on Marner and Matthews, and he would immediately change. Yeah, no, that, that's that's what you gotta do though. Yeah, that's what you gotta do with someone like like him, especially like Gustafson's at like full on. He like the guy can't defend. Like, like put it nicely, man. The guy yeah. can't defend for shit. And, but like yeah. he, that's why he's only playing the little time. That's why he's on the power play, and like he was on the power play because the guy is. I mean, he's good offensively. That's why they got him. I don't know. I don't know about the cap hit for the future, but I mean, it worked for the past three games. Well, and... He might be going to uh, Seattle. That's a whole other. <laughs> anyway, um, to your point, Calum. Again, like as soon as um, Gustafson w- would see Mount Ernst, he'd jump off. But you would see, you know, Weber, Sherratt, 
um, Edmonton, Petrie come on, but you also see like Danol and Gallagher, and I think it was Tatar for a bit too. But Danol did a big one, job shutting down Matthews and Martin. Matthews only had one goal. Martin had nothing. I don't even think he'd have had a point. This I, don't even, I was gonna say I don't even think Matthews had a scoring chance like in the first period. He had one in the there second. Like yeah. that, that like Gustafson a- doesn't have his for us. Gustafson has like a large contract, but he doesn't. Yeah. Also, yeah. Jack Campbell. Why, why do people think he's so good? Nah, he's he's good. <laughs> he's, he's good. Like he's good, but like people are like he went eleven and one like in John the Gibson. regular season. Like I mean, game. the guys like I don't put any. There's nothing you can blame this guy for. The guy has a what? Let me pull it up. Yeah, I think it was one point. Eight yeah, the same, if not he's, better stats he, than Price has. Oh, yeah, because no, before he played, game he six. played good. So I think I think Toronto fans put so much trust in him because he had that insane run. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, he's honestly I, like he's and a he's good goalie. and he's also a really nice guy, by the way. I oh, think he's, he's just a really nice like a average starting goalie on a good. Run I agree, right I, but like I the way he played this like this playoffs and and the that's a weak goaltending that that mm-hmm. that's actually yeah. weak. So he wasn't I don't blame the, he wasn't the issue at all. I don't blame Leafs oh, no. fans for getting all hyped about that, to be honest, just because, like, I mean, they haven't gotten good goaltending. I mean, maybe maybe Fred, Freddy, Fred Freddy. for the past four years, but they haven't gotten, like, good goaltending in the playoffs like that. Yeah, that's you, true. you haven't gotten playoff goaltending like that before. Also, I think their defense improved this year, which says something with yeah. the Leafs. The, too, the which, Leafs? Helps, oh, which, which helps their goaltending is when your defense gets better as well. Obviously, the Muzzin thing kind of sucked. But that, like, that and with the... Good. The, the Tavares and Muzzin thing. Tavar they won game two, three, and four without Tavares. They win. They lose Muzzin. Like, and like I know Muzzin got the comeback in like game five. Muzz, they lose Muzzin and they still come back without him in game six. And then they dominate all of overtime. I forgot. I forgot. Someone said this too, but like, like it's just like they got fifteen shots in overtime. The other two, like, was one was like a I don't even know what the other shot. The other one was caught Kanyemi to win the game. They dominated without these guys. Like they, you you got to put one in. I know it's price, but you you got to get. Ah, uh, it's just it's brutal. It, like you shouldn't even get to that point that point where you allow that many. It's goals honestly to infuriating that. to be. It would be infuriating to be a Leaf fan at this point, just because it's like it's like you're this you're this team you're this good. You've done all these things. How are you not getting out of the first round? It just to me uh, yeah. it doesn't make sense, but that's yeah. Um. Again, I think what Ian said is kind of like most people's like reaction. Like, where do you actually go from here? I, I have no clue. Uh, Dubas is in for a fucking fun. I was gonna uh, say, do you do what do you do first? Do you do you trade players? Do you fire Dubas? Do you fire Keith? What do you do? Fire Keith. I I I I I brought up firing Keith to a few people yesterday. I like Keith. I think he's a good coach. I just somebody has to be held accountable for this because this is just unacceptable. I don't know. It's not Keith after Game Seven say that he can't even talk to the players. Like your coach, like everybody's. I was gonna say I'm sure everybody deserves a bit of blame. Like Dubis, Keith, the players, fans. Only 500 fans showed up on Monday. That's just disgraceful. Considering <laughs> five or 20, fifty, actually. Yeah, yeah, five fifty after there was 2,500 on Saturday. <laughs> Leafs fans. Are just the worst, no. But I mean. I, 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 if I'm Toronto, I would probably consider bringing all of, if not at least, Spezza back again, Simmons back. I think Wayne Train worked out really well. Yeah, you know, he worked, he's working really well before the injury, obviously. But I mean, he wasn't bad after that. He was, you kind of need a guy like him, I guess, especially to stick, stick up for those guys. Thornton, he, I think you can give him a spot back again. I don't, I mean, who you're gonna give? Uh, what's his name? No, not Joey Anderson. Uh, what's his brother? Who Toronto got instead of, for? Um, what's his name? Anderson. One of the Anderson brothers. Or you could just bring back Jimmy Vc and Travis Boyd and just run that back again next year. Like, Jeez. I, I, those are the, and then those are the guys that I would bring on forwards. You're not re-signing hmm. Anderson. I feel like you could like, I mean, you can drop one of those guys and you can also, you do have Nick Robertson, which they tried to bring up last bring year. I'm pretty sure for a spark, why are you going to get a fucking 18 year old guy to come in there and try to spark your team? You have multiple 10, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to go there with the contracts. Anymore. I was going to say, you can bring, <laughs> no, but you, no, but you could bring in Robertson and Amirov probably next year. Yeah. Amirov, yeah, Amirov can to, definitely right. come in to probably, yeah. to probably make up for those two, like for, it's like the money ball thing where it's like, 
you're just bringing in other guys to replace the one guy. Yeah, because right? you're you're gonna lose a lot of these. Like Hutton's not coming back, and like Marinson, <laughs> please. And then like, uh, yeah, I don't know. We you'll Bogosian worked well with the team. I think I don't know if he comes back either though. Um. Any final thoughts before we move on to our next? Episode? Um, I would say before we talk about roster shuffling with the Leafs and with any team, to be honest, I think we got to see what Seattle is going to do before we yeah talk about yeah shuffling. I feel I feel like Justin Hall might be the guy on the way out. Justin I think Hall, he is. yeah, I think he Hall, is Hall played better than Dermot, so yeah. I feel like he, he well, had the most shots last game. I'm pretty sure for him. Like, it, well, the other thing about Hole is that he's 30, right? Like, or 29. He is getting yeah. like he's, he's getting up there. He's a late bloomer, anyways. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I feel like like Scott says Seattle's gonna be something to watch with them. Um, any other final thoughts? I want to move on to uh, the second round. No, I just I I guess the Nick Felino trade. I just thought of that now. Just like that was a really that was a gamble for Kyle and I don't think that, that was probably the worst trade. Worst. I move. no, yeah. I still don't mind that trade because I know that Dubas was trying to build his roster in a certain way. And when you when you have a plan, you stick to that plan and you keep going with that. And it didn't work. Yeah, out. I just don't know if like the price was worth it. We'll see. We'll obviously see like what Columbus does. I mean, Columbus. I mean, John's not coming back, which is good. Maybe you can get Line to actually play like he should play and all that. But that's for another time. That's another well, podcast. Jones. Jones doesn't want to resign. Yeah, Seth Jones. So they're looking at. I think they're looking to move, uh, move Seth Jones. Marner for Jones. Marner for Jones. I saw <laughs> Bieksa say yes. Second. Well, Bieksa, remember, BX is a right shot defenseman, and he works in Toronto, so he'd want to see. A good uh, he said he was in California today. Yeah, he's in oh, Cali oh. now. Um, Anyways, 